who will be crowned Mzanzi's next cooking star? The search continues right here on Color Your Plate with Ku. Yay, top five. I'm excited, I'm happy. One step closer to that grand prize of 75K. The Thermomix sitting on my countertop. Making it in the top five has really like cemented me in my skills. I'm ready to bring it. Guys, we are looking at our top five. Woo! Congratulations. <laughs> top five, here we come. I'm back. <laughs> so far in the Kaleo Plate with Crew Kitchen, we have explored many meal options. We've even covered sweet and we've covered savory. But we haven't touched one. Lake Iwakla in The one people eat when the rooster crows. They say it's the most important meal of the day. Ooh. This week we are making breakfast. We know that Ku has been there for us at breakfast time with the convenient meal solutions. But today we want to see a color your plate spin on it. Yes. Think about when you receive a full spread, when you order a full English. But we want to see a full Zanzi. <laughs> South Africans want to be inspired by fresh and innovative ideas. We want you to elevate every single element on your plates. So we're not looking for fried eggs and bacon. Even eggs benedict is just not enough anymore. Mm -mm. You will get one hour for this cook and you have to include cool products. So go big or go home. This one hour thing isn't working for me to like it anymore. I think I got too comfortable with the two hours. Nah, it's not a big deal. And winning this challenge will save you from competing in next week's elimination and fast track you to top four. Oh, yay. <laughs> we love cooking, but yeah, you just need that little bit of fast track, you know, let everyone else fight it off. But before we start the challenge, Arthur, I could do with a little pickup, a little boost. You How too? do you feel? Yeah, yeah, it's been a long morning. Yes. How would you like to earn some time for your challenge today, some extra time. I, I don't yeah, think that is. Yes, yes, please. Do you all want it? Yes! yes. <laughs> so, we are going to give you 10 minutes to create the most nutritious, delicious smoothie that is packing a powerful boost. After the 10 minutes is up, we're going to walk around and taste, and the winner will receive 10 extra minutes in their cook today. You good with that, right? Yeah. You can do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see that coming, but let's get to it. Oh, smoothies is definitely not my jam. Are you guys ready? Yes. Your time starts in three, two, one, go! <laughs> Smoothie challenge. So out of my comfort zone. I don't like smoothies. I don't drink smoothies. I am making a pina colada inspired smoothie with pineapple, toasted coconut and cool apricots. I'm going to be making a green warrior smoothie. I have spinach, I have kale, I have cool sliced pineapples, I have yogurt. I'm gonna add in some banana, a little bit of avocado, some ginger as well are gonna go in there. My idea is going on flavors. It's beetroot, apples, orange with basil. Nice classic combination with some yogurt and crushed ice. I'm going for a morning sunrise. I'm doing peaches, pineapple, mango, and ginger for that shot. I don't make smoothies often. I actually don't like them. I'm not a healthy person, I guess. So I'm thinking a mango lassi. I'm going to be using, of course, mango. I'm going to be using some ginger, which will be my spice. I can see she has mango and she has ginger. I guess great minds do think alike, or is she stealing from my mind? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know, Majaj, you can think what she wants. This was in my head before we even started the challenge. I was feeling for a mango lassi. <laughs> I'm going to spruce it up with some cool pineapple as well, with some yogurt and ice. I think this smoothie is um, going to be nutritional enough. It has apricots, pineapple, berries, which have nice antioxidants. It's going to be good. You have five minutes left, contestants. Five minutes! Now that the sun of my sunrise smoothie is all done, I can now do 
the rising of the sun where I add strawberries to the same mixture. I'm adding some basil to it because I think it's a very nice flavor with my favorite poo beetroot and orange. So apart from the beetroot, I'm also using the Koo apple slices. The apple slices are really there obviously to add that awesome, like naturally sweet flavor, but also the texture. The Cape Town mangoes are not the same as Durban mangoes, I must admit. It's not as sweet, but I mean, you guys can try harder. <laughs> I need that 10 minutes. <laughs> I need that 10 minutes. One, One minute. minute! One minute. Chia seeds and coconut milk is what's in the bottom layer. I'm happy with how my smoothie looks. I was just hoping that it's actual clear layers. They stop quickly. 30 seconds! Oh! Like it, but I feel like it doesn't have a wow factor, but it's what I could achieve in 10 minutes. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, stop blending! Good job, everybody. I think it went pretty well, and I think the judges are going to enjoy it. That was fun. I'm very excited about this. I love this a lot. My mom and I drink the Green Warrior smoothie a lot, so bam. It was exciting because I don't usually do smoothies at home, so it was nice. So I'm looking at uh, the other glasses, and they look a little bit more colorful, but I'm happy with my taste. That was 100% intense, but it's down to the flavor. Couldn't do garnish, but hey ho, here we go. I think I've done enough to get the extra 10 minutes. I did three smoothies, well, three layers in a smoothie, and everybody just did one. Contestants, well done on that smoothie mini challenge. We really enjoyed it. We've had a deliberation, and we've decided on who the winner is. For us, the winning smoothie really hit the brief. It was nutritious, it was wholesome, and it packed a powerful boost. And it was delicious. Mm -hmm. And that winner is... Matlatsi. Ah! <laughs> Green Warrior! Congratulations, Matlatsi. All right, you will win an extra 10 minutes on the main challenge today. But before we get there, I think it's time for a masterclass. Are you guys yeah. ready? Yes. Okay, let's do it. Sweeten up any occasion. Just open and use as is for everyone to enjoy. Color your plate with Koo. Breakfast, obviously it's a necessity in the morning. And I think the nice thing is, it's kind of like changed over the years. So we're gonna show you one way of elevating breakfast and we're gonna start with making the bread. So we've got some self-raising flour here. We're adding some salt and then Arthur will combine our wet ingredients. Okay, we've got some milk, cool cream style sweet corn. We've got some oil and some apple cider. There's obviously some sweetness in the cider. Obviously the yeast will also bring some lightness. It'll add really lovely flavor to it as well. I think the addition of apple cider and the cornbread is going to add a nice yeastiness that you don't get from an unleavened bread. Oh, Go I'm feeling. Is it not too wet? No, it's more of a better consistency. Okay, finish it off. Thanks, Arthur. Okay, cool. Okay. He's so helpful in the kitchen. Our oven's uh, preheated to 180. Arthur, so just finish it off with uh, some cheese over the top and then you go straight into the oven. Okay. 20 minutes into our oven. Let's move on to the eggs, Arthur. Oh, I actually thought we were only making bread today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so what is a South African breakfast without boerewors? Okay, so we want to make our version of a scotch egg. Mm. Probably maybe call it then a South African egg. Okay? <laughs> if we add if we add boerewors, Arthur. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to take just the meat out. Out the casing. Yeah. Okay. We've got one egg. We've boiled it for about uh, six minutes. So it's nice and soft still inside. And uh, what we want to do is obviously coat the egg with our burevors. So the burevors are already seasoned. Does anyone ever make burevors for breakfast? No. Come on, no. Don't yes, tell us that. Yes, 
sausages. Yeah. Yes. So you go for sausages. Okay, more English breakfasts. Ah, uh, you see. Okay, the idea is obviously for you guys to inspire South Africans with your breakfast. Mm. Okay, so even if you're not used to using certain things for breakfast, we want you to do something different. Some greaseproof paper on top. I'm going to use this pot just to flatten it. Mm, that's smart. With scotch egg, you just want sort of the outside, the exterior to be nice and crispy, but the important thing is that the egg is still nice and soft inside the yolk. I've never seen that being done before. I usually see it being done with pork sausage, and I've actually never thought of doing this. This was a very smart idea. Okay, cool, like that. Mm. Pretty. Got some flour. These are a nice sort of crispy panko breadcrumbs, so they make it nice and crispy. So the ideas are already mulling in your head. Yep, the mm. one is so quiet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think he... It's getting nice and golden. It smells nice. Is it one more minute or two more minutes? Arthur's one of those people that want exact times. Yes, you know, I'm here to... As, as, as cooks, and you can tell him. You feel it. Oh, I must feel it. Yeah. In I... your bones, you your feel it. Your ancestors must tell you. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Add more. Okay, I think it's done. Mmm. Oh, nice. Before we cut into the egg, we're going to bring uh, our breads and all the other elements and finish it off for you guys to have a taste, okay? Today in Masterclass is actually a really nice one for me. I personally love scotch eggs, but they always seem so complicated to make. They make the recipe seem impossible to follow, but just it's making it seem accessible to me to do at home now. Okay, our cornbreads, uh, they came out of the oven. We slice them open and just grill them a little bit. I've made a bit of a, in the cape we call it a tomato smooth. It's got a nice sort of sweet smokiness to it, okay? Is that not gravy? Okay, gravy, man. <laughs> Do you guys call it gravy? Yes! Oh, you're coming with fancy words now. Okay, gravy. You see, just two hours away and everything changes. <laughs> okay, I've also made some baked black mushrooms. Ooh! That's a nice surprise. Mm. Mm. I'm leaning forward to see. And yay! Ah, Arthur. Well done. That looks good. You got hey. it. Ooh, the scotch egg is oozing with the center, that granny yolk. Okay. Goes on to our smoor gravy. <laughs> Evo obviously brings a bit of freshness. Dukkha spice. Okay. okay. Yummy. There is such simple elements in the dish but the flavors are enhanced using simple ingredients and it looks funny. The hot thing nowadays is hot honey. Yes. Eh? Yes. Chef Ruben's final plate looks so delicious. It looks like something out of a restaurant. That is what a South African breakfast should look like. Love it. Your bread, guys. It's so flavorful. Let's go for the squash, eh? That's very nice. Mm. Good flavors. Best breakfast I've had ever. I've never tasted a mushroom done like that. And the scotch egg with that runny yolk, spot on, man. Yeah, I think we emphasize all the time that we want to see creativity from you guys, but also understanding where you can be creative and where you have to pull back a little bit. Yeah, okay. enough talking now, Ruben. Yeah. I think um, <laughs> you're all ready to reimagine South African breakfast, yes. right? Yes. Okay, let's get on with it. I would pick a traditional South African breakfast over a full English because I'm a proud South African. <laughs> local is lekker. Let me keep it local. Contestants, remember, this is to earn your spot in the next round. And also one more thing. The winner of today's challenge not only saves themselves from next week's elimination, they also walk away with a Le Creuset three and a half litre casserole pot with more than 4,000 Rand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Masati, you get 10 extra minutes. Ready, steady, colour your plates. Ha <laughs> 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 now the pressure's on. <laughs> for me or for you, honey? For <laughs> you, honey. <laughs> High expectations. Isn't this awkward for you? Not really. Oh, she loves the attention, you know? 100%. <laughs> I was born for this. <laughs> that was a chance. This is gonna help me relax and not have everything rushed so that I can think through what I'm doing. 10 minutes is a blessing. Let's see, I see a lot of spices. What's happening? I wanna roast my chickpeas. This is gonna give a nice crunch to my meal. So they need to be tasty. Are you not scared that they're gonna steal your recipe? I mean, everybody's just looking at you. Someone can steal my recipe, but how will they execute it? Like me or no? <laughs> Pull 
disclosure, this is part of my plan already, I promise. <laughs> I'm not stealing nobody's anything. You don't want someone to think you're trying to steal their ideas and you can't be original, you know? Zelda, Zelda, jealousy doesn't look good on you. I'm just kidding, you know I love you. I know! Looks like you like the attention there. Love it! I was born for this. Yeah. I said to my girl, she is so confident. <laughs> she is oozing confidence. Fatima, you're very quiet there. If you had this extra 10 minutes, what are we going to do? I would probably use it very wisely. Not talk too much. That's Fatima, Fatima. I'm as fast as a jet. <laughs> So talking does not slow me down at all. But I can stop and wait for you. <gasps> Mishlatze is like spice galore. But you know, that's what makes us love her. It's almost time for you guys to join the party. I've toasted, I've roasted, I've chopped, I've blended. It's enough for me to get a head start. So now we're gonna move on to other things. Five, Five four, three, two, one. Everybody else, ready, steady, cut out your pants! Cumin, turmeric, butter beans, and chakalaka, that's it. I am making some beetroot flapjacks using the cool beetroot. I'm making fit cook, stuff fit cook. When I was in high school, I used to love eating oats in the morning and then only to get to school to buy fit cook. And that was my combo for almost every day and I'd be full for the whole day, so I love it. I'm toasting my oats with cinnamon, star knees, cloves, because I want that sweetness to come through. Today I'm making mealy bread with a bacon jam, a butter bean relish, and for that braai feeling, I'm making a roasted yellow pepper and corn salsa. I am hoping to make samp and bean croquettes filled with some butter balls to give it that South African twist. And I also want to make a shakshuka style with some fried egg, crispy chickpeas, and I want to do roasted corn with that as well. A mint and yogurt sauce, a lot of elements going on. I see, uh, is that bacon and butter balls? Bacon and butter balls, yes, that's right. You're going to add the samp and beans in there? Yeah. What else? I'm um, making like a South African style shakshuka really. Oh. So that's where the croquettes is gonna go in the shakshuka oh, nice. with a nice soft egg. You obviously were talking about the chickpeas. How are you gonna prepare that? Is that still part of your dish or did you change your mind? It is part of my dish. I'm not gonna abandon it. I'm sure it'll taste completely different. Um, using the ku chickpeas, I'm adding some spices. It's just some paprika and cinnamon and your olive oil. And I'm just gonna pop it in the oven to get nice and roasty and toasty. One of the things that I like to eat for breakfast is a nice shakshuka. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try and deconstruct that. And I'm making my tomato sauce that's going to be the base. I'm going to add in some lamb to tie in with the Mediterranean feel. I mean, I thought we are going to Mzansi. It's going to And that give, is like North African. It's going to give Mzansi in terms of the flavors that I'm putting in. If you go to Joburg North, this is what people eat in Joburg North. They eat a lot of Mediterranean food. So it's Mzansi culture. Okay, I see you have mince and vors. Yeah. What is the plan today? So um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be using the vors. I'm just going to keep it as backup, but I am planning to make meatballs. Mm -hmm. I'm also planning to do a little bit of a hash brown by making also balls, but it's going to be corn and cheese inside, covered with some mashed potatoes, and then put into some panko and, and fried like that. Yeah, I'm also going to be making a shakshuka. I heard shakshuka just now as well. And then I'm planning to make a garlic naan to accompany that. Shakshuka is a very fancy word, and we grew up eating this, and we would call it a simple egg chutney. So we are going to be making egg chutney, but with chakalaka in, just to bring that South African vibe into the dish. Battle of the shakshuka. May the best shakshuka win. Cookware supplied by Chef Diversitas. Promoting healthier cooking by minimizing the need for excessive oils and fats. Made by the brand you love, Koo Beetroot. Just open and use as is for everyone to enjoy. Color your plate with Koo. 
stones, that's cinnamon and oats. Hold on, hold on. Yes. And beetroot. Yes. Yeah, and cloves. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what is it going to make at the end? This is going to make beetroot flapjacks. Come on. Yep. So we asked for a jacket and zanzi spread. Yes. So kitty flapjacks got more ling happening, happening, happening. So we are indulging in both. Starch. Starch. Hey. Uh, I am not. Feast. Feast. South Africans, we feast. Okay. The magunya are going to have a poached egg inside, some cheese and bacon, and then we're going to deep fry it in the bread yes. and crumb it. And then we're going to throw magunya in the chips. So I was going to say, Anyway, I'm going to be shit today. Batat. Anyway, I'm going to be born. What is that? I'm making a mealy bread. You're oh, taking us back home, huh? Yes. Yes. I'm yes. glad you also used that masterclass here, Ruben, with the charring of the pepper. Yes. Yeah. No, you're teachable. Get your bonang on this. Le kon bredi na ilo gona today. Oh. Masterclass. Okay. So, kimola, limola, diakopan. So. Mm. <laughs> okay. Good luck, man. Thank you. I think I'm gonna add an element to make it a little bit more South African because I can see the worry in Arthur's eyes. So I'm just going to add sweet corn. Sweet corn is very South African. So I think I'm going to make a nice sweet corn and tomato salsa and that's going to be my fresh element for the dish. Time is moving very fast for the number of components that I have. Right now I'm busy with my hot sauce, my butter bean relish and my bacon jam. And the bread is in the oven, so that's good. I'm making potato, cheese and corn balls. Making a shakshuka here, I'm making a kebab here. I've got about 35 minutes. I think it's going to be enough time. What are you making there? This is the base for my shakshuka. The I'm base? also going to be adding the ku baked beans. To the shakshuka. To this, yes, to give it that South African twist. We all love baked beans with our breakfast, don't we? Mm -hmm. But just making it in a different form. And cracking the eggs on top. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to fry my egg. Mm -hmm. and then place it in the middle. So a bit of this constructed shakshuka. Mm -hmm. Happy? Mm -hmm. Okay, can I have a taste as well? Mm. <laughs> Ruben, you want to share? It's very hot. You're cheating out there, buddy. Why not? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. So, yeah, the tester was actually meant for me, and then they eat it, and they just walk away. Like, I need some feedback, guys. Like, give me something in return. I couldn't help but notice that you, you do look a little bit sort of Black, nervous, unsure, still. Yeah, I'm trying to get my components on. There's lots to do. I need to still start my naan bread. So yeah. the Vosh, you decided not to use it in there? I don't know, I'm going to use it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with my eggs. To make a bacon jam, you first need to start searing your bacon. And then you just need to add some sugar. In this pot, I'm making a homemade chili sauce. I'm used to cooking multiple things at the same time. The only difference is that now I'm being judged. <laughs> Contestants, you're halfway through this challenge. 30 more minutes to go. Let's Woo! go, guys. Let's go. You're doing well. Thank you, Arthur. Yeah. You've had way more than that. You've had <laughs> 40 minutes. Yes. Okay? I don't see any of the components here. Where are they? My bacon is here. I'm gonna let it go. My tomato sauce is here. The smur. Mm, the smur. The smur. The gravy. The gravy. <laughs> My chickpeas are still in the oven. Mm. I need them to dry up a little bit. Thank you. What is that? My uh, egg is poached. Patty lying there. This is my patty that's gonna go on there. This is like the burro boars meat element that's gonna come into my dish. Okay. For the bread, I'm going to knead that into a dough and then I'm going to roll it and then I'm going to make like indentations on there so that it's easy to break. Well, and she's a baker, she mm. knows what she's doing. <laughs> yes. This is a happy place, I think. It is. Hey? I actually hate making bread, but yes. Have you ever heard of something called being overconfident? Yes, that's hmm? me. Is that you? Next to me on the dictionary. It's my tattoo and it's overconfident. Yeah. But it's never put in you, eh? No. So why, why change? Never changing that. Exactly. Or oh, happening here. Um, that's biltong powder. Biltong powder. Yes. Okay. What are you gonna do with that? The biltong powder was used as a topping on the bread. So I toasted some sesame seeds, coriander seeds because of that burovors flavor, and Ooh, just to top, put it on top of the bread to make it look beautiful uh. and to give it an extra South African punch. I'm getting like. Serious Mzunzi vibes here. <laughs> hey? Once the croquettes are ready, I'm going to have to start with my naan bread. So it's uh, 20 minutes to go and I'm starting my naan bread, but I think I'm okay. 
because um, it's a little bit of a cheap naan bread. It's quite fast. I've got a cheap recipe for naan bread without yeast and it goes up with uh, some flour and baking powder, a little bit of seasoning and some yogurt. This is a mint yogurt and lime, like a little sauce. It needs more mint, but it's good otherwise. So I'm starting with assembling my fit book. I take bread, I cut the corners because I want perfect little squares. I add cheese, I put bacon, and then I add my poached egg. What's gonna follow after you put the eggs in there? You're gonna toast it? Uh, I'm gonna deep oven. fry oh. in the bread yeah. and make it a fit book. Oh, careful, careful. Yeah. Can you call it that, a McGuena toasted sandwich? I guess so. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how you keep that egg hole, uh, Imojati. Hey, yeah. Chef. You're challenging yourself here. She, yeah. she really is. Hey. But I like it because it's very South African. I love Just it too. Just in different ways. No. It starts spilling. My heart breaks. Hey, what I think I have 20 minutes left. Oh. <laughs> On the screen. I think I'm going to have to make another batch of eggs. Yo. Oh. oh, my. I was I was bringing out some fire there that I didn't even know about and I needed to rescue it. Fortunately, everyone's still alive. The food is still good. I think I'm smoking them now. 15 minutes left. I'm putting on my flapjacks. So at least I'll have something on the plate. I'll add the bacon if I have to. I am going to try a different method rather to redo the magunyas because this one did not work for me. I'm happy with the chips because I'm going for more slap chips vibe. Contestants, you have 15 more minutes to go. 15 more minutes. I'm very happy with how the bread turned out with the toppings as well. It has to scream Nsansi. I'm trying to make a plan B with my fit cooks and it's not planning B. It's not planning B. We're trying to make plan C. Plan C is not planning C. We even got to Z. I'm just trying to salvage what I already have because I've got 10 minutes left and nothing is going accordingly. I'm thinking, so I'm like, if I put these fake books in the oil, maybe they'll come together and they won't lose. Yo, another big mistake. Yo. Now the oil is getting inside the fake book and it's not, it's not even crisping up on the outside. Mm, ooh, mm -mm, it's a big mess. This is gonna be my added element that's giving South Africa. In the township, when we eat breakfast the next day after an hour of jawling, we eat like a tomato salsa type of thing. We call it spizozo. And it's packed with a lot of chili. So it's <laughs> supposed to cure the hangover. So this, I'm gonna add in my grilled sweet corn into here to make it a little bit more South African because we love our sweet corn. I'm going to try to at least fry one little flat bread if I have enough time. It would be a very nice addition. So right now, nothing is working out, so the plan is changing. Fit book, gone. Now we have two flapjacks that can only make the plates. We've got three poached eggs that are left to be adding that to the plate. Slap chips are there because they're perfect. Chagalaga, acha, great. It's there. Bacon, it's there. Marada, look, I'm not, I get happy. I get happy, Jeremy. Not a lot of time left? Yeah. You happy? I'm happy. I got all my Looks elements that I need to. Yeah, everything, but yeah, but I'm happy. Yeah. Naan is there, kebabs is there, um, hash browns are there, and this is almost ready. Okay, I, I would turn that down slightly. Yeah, I can see it sort of yeah caramelizing too much on the side. Okay. My vision for the plate is shakshuka spread out over the plate. My eggs pop that on top of the shakshuka, and then three little croquettes on the one side, three croquettes on the other side, with a yogurt sauce dabbed in between it, some corn and chickpeas scattered all throughout as well. Now it's just the finishing touches that needs to go. For my chili sauce, after it's infused, it goes straight into the blender. For the roasted yellow pepper salsa, it's the roasted yellow pepper, and I just cut that into small cubes. There's some tomato, and then red onion, and fresh coriander. Just mix everything together, and that's it. I don't have a vision yet for plating. I do think that I might put my sauce at the bottom and everything on top, just as a shakshuka would look like, and everything else that's gonna be crunchy needs to obviously go on top so that it maintains its crunch and it doesn't get socked up with the liquid at the bottom. Contestants, you only have five minutes left. You must be plating by now. 
Let's go. All my components made it onto the plate. I am very happy about this. I wanted to go with a rustic home style of plating. Just something that feels homey and familiar. Ooh, okay. That's hot. Contestants, one more minute to go. One Ooh. more minute. Butter? Yes, it's chocolate butter. Jody? Yes, sir. Are you okay? No, the hey? whole dish had to now change. Okay, okay. Because you have to pivot, pivot. You know, there's not a lot of time anyway, so plate up what you have, yes, okay? Sir. Then the last few seconds, I'm just kaganting, kaganta, kaganta, fail. I'm just mixing what's there on my station and a guy local on my plate, and that's what I'm serving to the judges today. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop cooking! Well done, guys. Good job, you did it. I'm looking at my plates and I'm very disappointed. This is what is supposed to be a reflection of me. I just might cry all off. One of the two. I just hope somehow when they taste it, they think, oh, it's going to be yum yum. I'm feeling happy. I didn't quite achieve everything I wanted to, but you know, that's the name of the game. Nah, I'm definitely not happy with the plating, but um, I think the flavors are good. I'm just a little unhappy with the plating. I'm feeling very good about my dish. It's exactly what I wanted. The 10 minutes helped me get a good start. I was done early, but yeah, I think without the 10 minutes, I would have been running. Yeah, thinking that making breakfast in an hour is easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was proven wrong today because I had to do so many components. Yeah, but I did it. Everything is on the plate. Mzanzi's original favorite for all meal occasions, Ku Chakalaga. Just heat and eat. Only the best will do. Color your plate with Ku. I'm feeling very nervous waiting for judgment. Sometimes you can eat stuff and you can cook things that you enjoy. You just never know how the next person might or will receive it. Matlats. Hi. What's up, my kitchen? What's up, my shabu, hey? I think 10 minutes, Yamatomo gave me a little bit of an edge over the others. Yeah. Take us through your dish. I made like a deconstructed shakshuka. I made a nice tomato cumin -y base. And then on top of that, I added in my patty. I then poached an egg and I made like a quick flatbread. Excellent. We're going to taste. Thank you. One thing is I like flavors that have a kick, have a punch, rounded. So I think that's what's going to impress the judges. I thought the flavors came together really nicely and I like gravy. Yeah? I felt like I could just <laughs> keep mopping mm. the gravy with the bread. You know, Thank I thought you. it was really a nice breakfast. I absolutely enjoyed that. And it's those extra things that you added. Those bacon bits took the dish to another level. And the fact that you used lamb instead of beef for your patty, it's those details that really make a good dish and you do it so well. The 10 minutes obviously helped you a little bit. Yes. I like the smoor or the gravy, it's loaded with flavor. That salsa with the corn really works. But you know what? You have set the bar high for yourself, so I, kind of expected a little bit more. I think I did let myself down today a little bit. And I agree with Ruben, I could have done more. I know it wasn't a bad dish, but was it me? No. I think I don't taste the 10 minutes, the extra 10 minutes, you know. For me, it's really tasty, everything, but mm -hmm. nothing sort of pops. And that's what she's kept on giving us so far. Yeah. So now I'm actually judging her on a whole new level, you know. Level. Yeah. I get that. <laughs> she is a bit of an overachiever, but I felt that in the dish. Mm. She had a good head start and she used it to her advantage. We'll agree to disagree then. Wow. For now, we'll leave it there. Next dish, please. I'm on the verge of tears. I'm shaking, my guy. <laughs> I am not okay. I am just, ooh. I'm shaking today. <laughs> I know. 
This is not what you intended, is it? No. What went wrong? I think I was very ambitious, but I thought I could pull it off. Mm. After enticing us, no? <laughs> Some of it is over. <laughs> mm. So what did you make for us? Beetroot flapjacks with chakalaka acha, and then you have chips, and you've got bacon, and you say have some poached soft eggs. Shall we taste? Watching the judges taste my food is traumatic. I can see them, and all I can see is, oh, what are you guys eating? <laughs> I'm actually very scared to hear the response. I'm very scared. I think other than the fact that your plan didn't sort of succeed, I think it eventually also didn't really translate into any sort of balance in terms of flavor on the plate. I find the sweetness of the pancake together with the egg, it just doesn't work. I think you tried to save it, which was brave, but the mistake was really maybe in the initial idea. Jaji, I get this. I think as much as the flapjack is a new addition into this biocosmos, the sweetness on it took away from the beautiful cook on the poached egg and the chips are not right texture and I think today it, it fell flat. For me, I quite like the sweetness of the flapjack and the cinnamon that comes through with the poached egg. I loved it, to be very honest with you. <laughs> that for me worked for my palate. Timita is so sweet. She's like, I love it. It tastes so good. And I'll be like, oh. at least there's one comment that's making me leave the kitchen smiling today. I mean, I'm a person who eats grapes with feta cheese type of situation. Mm. You know? <laughs> so for my palate, I really yeah. did. I thought it came But some people really do nice like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's have the next plate. Yeah. Last week, I was in the bottom two and I'm really hoping that I can turn things around and really wow the judges. It went well. So what happens in today? Today we have a mealy bread, a bacon jam, a butter bean relish, and then we have a chakalaka infused butter, we have a homemade hot sauce, and egg and bacon. But disclaimer for the sauce, it's very hot. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I can feel that they like it. They're not really showing any expression on their face, but I think they like it. What's up? 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 What's it burnt all of my sins. <laughs> Hi. Forgive me for absent. <clears throat> Righty. I'm back, thank you. Okay. Are you fired? <laughs> okay. Okay. I live for moments like this. I mean, there is a party in my mouth. I keep going and eating. This was fantastic. Thank you. And you know what the funny thing is? But you can also put it in a restaurant. This really translates to what the challenge was. A big South African spread. That milli bread to die for. Chili yakona. It's nice, even though you have <laughs> This is why I call you the silent assassin. When I would like to get a gun, pop, 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 This is such a unique South African breakfast place, you know? And I think the beauty of the preparation of the butter beans, that slow cooking where you're developing flavors, and you did that with a lot of elements. I would be more than happy with a breakfast like that. Thank you. I'm very, very glad to hear the judges saying that I nailed the challenge. It really means a lot to me. Layers and layers and layers of flavor. You could eat that every day. I think this was really color your plate worthy. Yeah. Mm. Rainbow Nation. Mm. Butter beans, a delicate flavor that complements a wide variety of dishes. Color your plate with cream. I'm dreading this judging today. I tried so hard to do everything and it just didn't go that way today. Why well, you look so nervous, Zelda? 
My head was scrambled all over the place. I was actually a lot less focused than I usually am. Mm. Too many ideas. And what idea made it to the plate? I think the best idea, if I'm being <laughs> honest. It is my version of a shakshuka with ku baked beans in it. And I also made a sampan bean croquette, the fried eggs on top. There's a minted yogurt sauce and the chickpeas and the ku whole kernel corn for a little bit of natural sweetness as well. It's tasty. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Watching the judges eat this time was a very different experience. I could tell that they feel exactly the same way as I do. I'm going to tell you what I like about it. I like the croquettes. I like the fact that you added the yogurt like that. The chickpeas, they look crisp, but they're not completely sort of crispy. If you're going to go with a version of shakshuka, then I kind of expect it to be better than the normal version. I'm not sure it is in this instance. Zelda, I thought your dish had the makings of a great dish. I also like the assembly beans croquette, those spicy notes in there are really great. The shakshuka base, I, it just needed a little bit more time you know, so that you can develop those flavors. Zelda, I loved that sampan bean with bacon and that croquette. I love that. I wish it would translate to the rest of the plate. I'm missing you in the plate. Knowing that I disappointed Tembisa with my food today really broke my heart. You know, as, as, as the challenges go and weeks go by, the competition gets tougher and you cannot lose focus on your way to the finish line. Okay, next plate. Yeah. I'm pretty comfortable about my flavours again. However, I seem to always be slacking on the plating itself. Today, Fatima, it seemed like things were not going well for you. What was happening today? There were quite a few things that I was working on. Time was not on my benefit, but I managed to get everything that I wanted to on the plate. Take us through your dish, please. I've made a shakshuka using the chakalaka in it. I've also made some a potato, corn and cheese croquettes, some meatballs and naan bread. Okay, let's, let's taste, guys. I'm quite nervous about the judges tasting and giving comments on my food. I know I haven't performed as before. Fatima, I did feel your energy in the kitchen today. It was a little bit low and um, it translates on the plate. Your kebabs, they, they lack a bit of flavor. I like the fluffiness of the naan, but you know, it's missing that little extra touch, you know, to round off the flavor. There is the, that nice spiciness that comes through with the shakshuka and the soft egg, but I'm missing you. It's for me a dish that it feels like you just went halfway in. Mm. You know, you didn't go all the way in. So these touches of spice that you know you can do and that you enjoy, you kind of like went halfway and then you didn't go further than that. Yeah. And I think that's what we're missing. The shakshuka has nice flavors to it. The spiciness, that heat that just lingers on my palate, I quite liked it. But I think overall, the flavors you know, on the croquette and the meatball, they were quite polite. But I think overall, mm, today wasn't quite there, not 100%. I think I did have a clear plan, it just didn't get executed well enough uh, within the one hour space of time. I think the challenge tripped her up a little bit today. She did the exact opposite really of Mujaji. Mujaji decided to take a risk and go all the way mm. and she was like, okay, no one's going home, it's an elimination challenge, let me just do enough. Mm. And it really was not. Okay, are we ready to make our decision? Yes, we are. Waiting for the verdict this time around is very different to the other times I've cooked. I know they're not going to be calling my name as the winner, but at least I know I'm also not going home. Congratulations for completing this week's challenge. We asked you for breakfast spread. Some of you brought abundance and some of you forgot to bring the flavor to the party. Mujaja and Fatima, given that you had a week off. The two of you disappointed us today. That broke my heart. And you can be lucky it's not uh, an elimination round. 
If it was, we probably sent both of you home. I know I haven't performed as I wanted to. I'm just waiting for this to be over. But we are looking for a winner who is exempt from the elimination challenge and moves on to the next round. The winner for this challenge is Kotato. I'm very delighted to hear that um, I won today's challenge. I'm very excited to go to the top four. I think that's a big deal. Kotato, we felt that you really nailed the brief today. I mean, that spread was exactly what we wanted and it was super delicious. We loved it. Thank you. As a winner of today's challenge, you'll go straight through to the next round and you'll also win a Le Creuset three and a half litre casserole pot with more than 4,000 rand. Well done. Ooh. Ooh. I love Le Creuset. I'm trying to start a Le Creuset collection, but unfortunately I only have one pot. <laughs> so I guess now I have two. So I'm very happy about that. And to the rest of you, we'll see you in the Elimination Challenge. The next week, I aim to come pouring down with flavor. Well done, Kotato. Thank you, Sherry. I am going to bring it next week, and yeah, these ladies better be, better be careful. Inspiring Zanzi to be healthier and stronger with tasty, convenient, and nutritious meal solutions. See you next week on Color Your Plate with Koo. Another feel-good production.